if you look at how we achieve balance, the drums are the loudest instrument. It's forced to play on every beat with the bass, which is the softest instrument. The cymbal is the highest pitch. It's forced on every beat to play with the lowest pitch, which is the bass. The piano is a percussion instrument with melodic properties. So it plays all in the rhythm section and it's also a soloist. It's like the Congress. So it plays all of the keys. It can perform all the functions and it can play by itself. And if you look at the, what the, the bass is like the judiciary, the bass is the bottom of the harmony, determines the direction of the progression, sets the volume of the band. You can always tell how civilized the band is by its attention to a bass, if the bass is not amplified. Now, the amplifier has made it so that <clears throat> then issues of balance sometimes are just on the sound man. So that's a different proposition, a different style of music. Not, it's not a good or bad. It's just different. It's yeah. a different style. It's a different uh, objective. So, you know, I could go on and on with the many ways that we uh, we have things that are it could only be in a in a in a democracy or for those who are seeking to figure out how to be democratic. You know, uh, my, I mean, my father and them went to it. All the musicians always talked about it. I always grew up with with musicians and they largely struggled. They weren't famous or they weren't they were not popular. And they just uh, they were just trying to make it happen. You know, I used to always hear my father say about how they played. They just would get together and play. <laughs> and, and sometimes they would have people, but they were very acute politically. And they were into everything that went on and they talked about everything. In those times, it would be talking about Lyndon Johnson or, or Martin Luther King or Bobby Kennedy or uh, the, the Civil Rights Act. They had, you know, musicians always have a, a lot of political consciousness and a lot of uh, social understanding. They were always involved in some type of education. And they also... They live real lives. You know, people were dying of drug overdoses and they had problems in their personal lives and they were struggling making money and all of these things are, are, are very real. So it was the environment I grew up in led me to be interested in this kind of this kind of thing. And studying in school, I could just always see the, 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 the music and knowing pieces like Cold Train, I Love Supreme and Sonny Rollins, uh, Freedom Suite. It, it's, it's music that I that I grew up with. Yeah, music is I mean, instrumental music. Actually, is is uh, goes deeper than words, because words are removed from the experience. So by the time you name something, it's already. Well, I could call you Tom, or you can tell me some Ben. I got a tattoo. Okay, I understand what you're saying, but it, I don't really understand what you're saying. If you played it, I would understand it much better. Now you can't play and tell me I had a tattoo by playing. You're gonna play something else. And that something else will be whatever is the impulse to do what you did. So because music is the art of the invisible, it's stuff like thoughts, emotions, memories, aspirations, music deals with all of that. And that's why it's so pop that why it's so it's so powerful in that space. And the ability to hear instrumental music is a skill. It's the, the, the sound of your voice and the song of your talking is many times more gives you more of an identif identification. And a uh, elicits more of a response from from people than what you're telling them, unless you're saying something inflammatory. So, you know, if you listen to Love Supreme, it's not as specific as what's going on, right? When I was growing up, what's going on, Stevie Wonder's records, you couldn't go anywhere you didn't hear that that kind of music. And then in the '60s, if you take the the, the kind of white folk music, and remember that I grew up in segregation, so everything was segregated. Peter, Paul, and Mary, that was white music. So Stevie Wonder was black music. And American Bandstand was different from Soul Train. And so you, you, you have a tendency to look at the world in those ways because that's the world you live in. But jazz was always integrated. Jazz was a very different music. My father was one of the only people we knew who knew white people. So, and they loved each other. Like April. Bill Huntington was a bass player he played with. I'll never forget because the world was so se separate. I remember seeing them hug after a gig. Now we, you know, we, we're Southern, man. We do be a whole lot of hugging going on that time. Now as people are much more kind of emotive in yeah. that way. But but remember thinking, damn, look at that. Like that, just how powerful that was as a symbol. And that is a symbol of democracy. So when you're playing music, your consciousness is coming directly through your instrument. And as audiences are not trained to hear consciousness and sound, then they are more susceptible to being exploited. 